Hey guys, thanks very much for clicking on the video. You join me here in the woods on a relatively mild late October day. I've got my backpack with me. I've obviously got my dog Jax here with me. Um, I've also brought my tarp because it's forecasted uh, heavy rain showers. Not that I think they'll come in today because it's fairly mild, but I've got my three by three meter tarp. I'm gonna set up a shelter, just a simple plow point shelter on this dead tree behind me. I'm gonna get a fire going and cook up some food on the fire give Jack some food as well and then hike around the forest and see what we can find. This piece of wood here is pretty rotten but it's probably ideal for tent stakes really because the ground's quite soft where it's been raining. I say tent stakes, I mean tarp stakes. I'm just going to snap off a few, just use what's around me really. Bit of birch there. I only need about six or seven pegs. That's too short. Don't think I'll get that one. Oh, no. I'll keep an eye on Jax as well because he'll uh, run out. But there we go. Got tent stakes or tarp stakes. About six of them. This is my 3x3 three three meter tarp. Here's the dead tree stump that I was on about. It's a piece of Scots point. It's fairly rotten, but it's stable enough really to, to hold up the tarp shelter. And you know, I'm not here long term, so it should be fine. There's no wind forecasted really so I don't have to worry about it blowing down. I've got all the cordage ready on the tie-out points of my tarp. Those of you who've been long-term subscribers will see you know, how I use my tarp and how I set it up. But really what I want to be doing for the plow point shelter is finding the diagonal piece of my tarp, tying that as high as I can, and then fanning it out. Easier said than done. First I just get the tarp out so I can gauge which corner I want to use. So, so there's a video on my channel about uh, five different tarp, se tarp setups that I do for bushcraft and camping. Uh, I'll pop a link in the video description below for you guys if you want to, if you're sort of new to tarp setups, uh, it's a really good one for beginners. Uh, this one is a fairly simple but effective method. So I've got the diagonal of my tarp, or a diagonal of my tarp, and I'm just going to wrap this around as high as I can up here. You don't even have to tie a knot, you can just keep wrapping it on itself. but I like to get over and under that ground. And then the more wraps you do, generally the more secure it will be. Try and go over the tarp point and under the tarp point here. Now, at this stage you can choose where you want the front of your shelter to face. So it doesn't really matter today because I'm in a woodland I'm protected fairly well from the forest canopy but I'm gonna have the entrance facing you guys, facing the camera. So that's the great thing about the plow point shelter is that you can you know, change the angle of it to whatever you want and you can adjust it. So if the wind changes and it's coming into your face, you can just pull the pegs out and move it round. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. I might have to put the camera a bit further back. Let's go back there. It's a lovely, awesome day. Look at all the leaves. First thing I'm going to do is pull the diagonal out. And I'm going to tuck it underneath so that I've got a ground sheet. So I've put this up really quickly and it's not perfect, but it doesn't matter. I've left a bit of tarp. I've not made it so big at the back. So I've got this small bit here for a ground sheet. If it does rain, Jax can, you know, get under here and we can both get under here and at least have something to sit on. So I like to use the tarp effectively as a ground sheet as well. And if the wind direction was blasting into the entrance of the shelter, I just unpeg the three tarp tie out points that I've pegged in and just spin it round to face another direction. Nice and easy. But I'm pleased with that. Loads of space. Well out of the wind, well out of the rain. Yeah, good boy. It's getting near Jax's lunchtime, so just gonna feed him some dry kibble. He tends to run around loads in the woods, so he uses loads of energy. Good to replenish his energy. We can feed ourselves whenever we want, dogs sort of 
need a bit of a helping hand. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Let's keep these on my cargo pouch in my pocket because they're nice and easy to locate. So I'm going to get fire area cleared now. You good boy. <laughs> you good boy. Yeah. <laughs> Probably about here, really. I don't want the sparks to land on the top. The ground's really damp, so I should be okay. Yep, yeah, Jax, thanks mate. That's done. Okay. That's the worst of it. Didn't bring my big saw today, just bought the folding Laplander. However, my blade is incredibly blunt, so it's in need of a replacement or some maintenance, but it will do. I'm really liking this bag at the moment, it's just got so many clips and attachments for things. I'll do a full sort of review a bit more later at some point, but need the axe as well. So, a fresh piece of fallen Scots pine right next to the tarp. Couldn't be more ideal. So what I'm gonna do is just limit a bit first with the hatchet just to make sawing and processing it a bit easier. A bit rotten at that end, but the rest is uh, all usable. So you might notice Jax is leashed up and that's because he's just rolled in a load of deer scat, so I'm not too best pleased with him. He's a naughty boy, and that's where he's gonna stay now. Away, away. So I can saw this up, and he's just leashed to the tree. I always bring his leash just in case he runs off. Just gonna try and cut sort of as much of the non-rotten part of this wood as possible. really is blunt. There we go. Trying to cut it to about that length because I'm probably going to split it with the axe, not the knife. And I'm trying to cut it above or below the knots just to make it a bit easier. When I'm sawing like this, all I'm doing is using my foot, putting the stick on my foot to raise it up so that it's not on the ground. Because if it was on the ground like that and I'm pushing my weight on the blade, it's going to pinch that gap together and pinch my blade. So I tend to just rest it on my foot. Obviously it's sensible stuff, guys. Really, I should be putting a log there underneath or two logs, and then, you know, it's away from my feet. But I don't do that. I don't, I'm not suggesting to you guys to put your feet under it. It's just sometimes for me to get things done a bit quicker. That's what I tend to do. But you can just put logs underneath just so the weight of that log pulls the gap open and your blade doesn't get pinched. There you go. Couple more pieces. The other thing with Jack's dry kibble is that it makes them really thirsty. So, I've shown this in the video before, I just use my billy can top lid to give him a drink. Or I tend to always prioritise his food and his drinks first before mine because I know I can last longer and he'll never really ask for water. But I know he'll drink it. There you go, buddy. If you don't want it, that's your fault, but it's there. So for me to split these with the axe straight on this log here, it's just gonna sort of bounce because the ground's so soft. Could obviously lean it on the side like that. With a hatchet, I like to be kneeling down because because it's so short, if you stand up and you swing, you've got a really high chance of it hitting your, your uh, ankles or your legs, unlike a larger axe where you'll generally hit the dirt. So. Okay, not ideal, but now that it's, because it's so springy, I can use these split bits underneath 
to sort of act as a shock absorber so that it just absorbs it. Like that. Here's a few for a filey, some of the thicker ones. Just using the filey now as a solid backdrop. Just ran off with my stick. Thanks, mate. Haven't done this in a while. The subscriber said, Why haven't I done it the other day? So I don't really know. But here it goes. Tinder bag, throw down. So I'll keep some cramp balls, Doldinia concentricas, in here. And we are going to light a tinder bundle of dried bracken with a cramp ball. I don't want a massive cramp ball, there's some biggies in there. Look at the size of that. Oosh. First things first, with my knife, being very careful, obviously cutting towards, is just open up the face of the cramp ball because I need to be able to see those concentric lines the dry concentric lines in the fungus or fungi there are parts that are going to light so I'm just clearing an area really for it to take a spark you have to push down quite hard they're pretty tough tough these cramp balls okay Okay, that's, I don't need to blow anymore. Can you see that coal there? A little ember. That's all I need. I'm going to let that sizzle away there first. And now I can sort my tinder bundle out. You have to excuse noises, guys. I can hear forestry, <coughs> forestry guys around. So I've got my tinder bundle of dried bracken, which I've made into like a bird's nest. Pushed a hole in it there. Got the cramp ball. Here, burning away. I'm going to place that in that hole. Fold the top of the bird's nest of tinder around it. Got back up here. Got loads of small sticks here, and you do need a lot. And then eventually, I'll let that still burn. What I'll do is I'll put these on here because it will roar the fire. And then I'll need to lift that stick up to let it air. So who knows? It might not work, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. It's okay. And let the Oh, it's hot. I think I nearly took my eyebrows off. Got some oil, cooking oil, in a little test tube. But today we're literally just going to have some sausage and egg. All kinds of nice stuff. In fact, let's get some oil in the pan first. So, just going to cube up. This is the uh, smoked pork sausage, and you can actually eat this cold. Obviously, I'm not going to. But we've got sausage, egg. It's going to be a good time, guys. Good time. Uh, let's use the whole lot, I think. 
Let's have a big old mew. A hearty breakfast. So yeah, I'm just gonna fry this, not for too long. You stink of deer poo. Hmm? I just brushed them off with some leaves. It's all over his back, but I brushed it off with leaves and all there. You stink. You gotta wait there. You wait there. So, a couple of things are on my neck at the moment. Jax's dog whistle, the stag antler one, which you've seen in previous videos, and my little pocket bellows, which I actually thought at first was a bit gimmicky, but I, I cannot tell you how good these are. Little brass, sort of uh, protector sleeve up the front there and they go telescopic like a car antenna you could probably make one out of a car antenna they go to about a metre but they are unbelievable for when a fire's like this and you need to get it roaring again it uses a fraction of your energy compared to actually blowing in the fire it's so good So because that is my mouthpiece there, <clears throat> and that's the bit that goes near the fire, I tend to just put that in the, the mouthpiece down the leather sheath. Need to kind of spread these embers out a bit. There we go. letting oxygen get underneath really that's the plan there we go really can can go near the end here boil me a coffee now you can see how those two bits of silver perch are keeping the frying pan up allowing the oxygen to flow through Look at Jax, you can smell it, you can smell it, saucisson, it's ready for the egg, and that way there's no heat coming here onto my, there's my egg, onto the plastic part of the handle, so it works people. Work. Okay, we are cut. Now I can put the billy in and hopefully get a coffee on. Oh yeah. Hearty goodness. <laughs> He's just staring at me. Hmm. Better than I expected. Much better than I expected. At this point, I only need to boil water. I'm not here for a long time, so I don't really need to put any sticks back on it. But I do need to raise the temperature to try and get the water to boil. The coals aren't quite hot enough because I've not put big enough sticks on it. That's boiling now, already. Just from doing that, four or five blows, and we're boiling. So, got the old cookser, the spalted beach cookser. I need a spoon. Pop 
perfect. Great thing I would guess about a cookster is that the coffee does cool down a lot quicker than it would here in a uh, steel stainless steel canteen cup or something like that. It, you know, it's metal takes a longer time to cool down. So when you want that coffee and you're craving it, you can drink it a lot quicker when it's in a cookster. Now I'll just let that fire go out. In fact, I've got a bit of water left, but I won't put it out just yet because the, I'll let that die down a bit more for maybe an hour or so, go for a hike with Jacks, and then I'll put this water on it. Otherwise, I'm just leaving huge chunks of charred wood in the uh, in the land, which isn't, isn't cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I have released the hound. You can't quite see the deer poo on his back, because I scrubbed him pretty good. It's all down the back of him. What do you like, mate? What do you like? Can't take you anywhere without getting into trouble. Good boy. It's too big. It's too big. <laughs> Jax, it's too big. <laughs> you crazy, though. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. Sorry it wasn't a very long one, um, but thanks very much for watching if you did. He wants a frying pan, sorry. Um, the next video on TA Outdoors is going to be a really big one. Really big one. Um, I've spent a lot of time editing it. And it should be up, I don't know, maybe a week after this one. Maybe just over a week after this one. But it's going to be a real big one. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it. But I just wanted to take the time really to say thank you very much to all of you who are subscribed to the channel. Uh, I do really appreciate it. And I appreciate all your feedback and all your, your comments and things like that. Uh, so please do keep commenting and uh, any suggestions you guys have as to what you would like to see on the channel. I know I've got a, a sort of big shooting fraternity that follow us uh, because we did a lot of shooting videos in the past, but obviously YouTube then had this whole demonetization thing, so we've put that on the back burner as such. But now we're gonna be doing more shooting videos, so keep an eye out for those. Um, but any other things you wanna see, do you wanna see more fishing in the videos? Do you wanna see more kind of stuff like this with Jax? Um, he wants the frying pan again. Go on over there. Hello, come here. Hey, come here. Jacks, leave it. Anyway, anyway, let me know what you guys want to see. Thanks so much for watching the video. This is a relatively easy tarp setup, so if you're a beginner and you're looking to set up a tarp, it's really, really easy. But like I say, there's that five tarp setup video that I've got in the show more section below. Me and Jack's going to go on a nice hike now. I'm probably not going to film it because I, sometimes it's nice to just stop filming with the camera and actually enjoy going for a walk and just taking in the scenery because. I'd rather do that a lot of the time than try and look through it through a screen at it. It's nice to see the real thing. Uh, but thank you so much, guys, for watching. Really appreciate it. Oh, other news. Some of you have noticed there's a ring on my finger. I did actually get married uh, about two weeks ago now to uh, my wife, Emmy. We've been together about six years now. And, yeah, we thought it was, well, I thought it was about time to pop the old question. That was last year. And it was a fantastic wedding. It was really, really nice. It was all kind of autumn-themed. Um... I rocked up in a Camaro, I think it's a Z28 or something. Really, really nice old Camaro and um, kind of American muscle car. It was yellow, it was awesome. Hopefully there's a picture now. I'll, I'll pop a picture up of me uh, in my suit ready for the wedding. That's what I turned up to the wedding in. But it was a really, really nice day. We had such lovely weather. All our friends and family with us, it was, a, it was amazing. And uh, as I'm recording this, I'm now off on honeymoon. We've had a two week kind of back to reality, back to work. And we're now off on honey, honeymoon to Mauritius. Uh, to, it, just after this week or so, a couple of days' time, we're going to Mauritius for 12 days. So that's why things might go quiet on the channel for a bit. But the next video that you'll see after this will be huge. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon in another video. You ready, mate? Go on.